the amount of need that we have for new farmers has never been greater. And if it's veterans coming back from uh, the different wars or previous wars, that's a fantastic opportunity. And then just for just all kinds of young people looking for something meaningful to do with their lives, believe me, producing food for other people to eat is pretty meaningful stuff. But new farmers means new ways of production in places you never thought you could produce before, maybe on a rooftop, maybe in a repurposed park like where we are today. Allegria Farm is a one-acre, high-performance urban micro-farm located in Irvine, California at the Great Park, one of the few commercial farms actually located in a public park. Our mission has always been food security and energy independence, and we've proven that by building a, a farm here completely off the grid. We're solar powered, growing over 80,000 plants. It's our goal to empower Alegria to generate its own power so they can run all their operations off grid and that they can take that model and deploy it anywhere. Sustainable agriculture is about bringing all the pieces together. High productivity, high quality, but also high profitability. And at the same time, take care of all of our natural resources and the people that are working the land. And that's what we're doing here at Alegria. The tougher the drought gets, the more sense these farms make. We use 70 to 90% less water, and we deploy our systems right over man-made surfaces. If we're gonna bring food into the cities where we live and work, then we have to have, find places for these farms. There's currently 40 square miles of these types of places now in Los Angeles and Orange County. So to repurpose land and be able to put farms on it, create jobs, connect kids to nature, add energy to their lives, it's a paradigm shift in urban agriculture. The first thing Eric did was let us try a piece of lettuce, just a random piece of lettuce, and I'm used to having lettuce only with salad dressing. So I was like, I don't know, it's a little sketchy, but I had it and it was the best lettuce I've ever had. I was like, whoa, if this is what lettuce can taste like, like I only want this type of lettuce for the rest of my life. As a father, it's really important that my son eats healthy. And the only way I can truly ensure that is knowing where my food's coming from. When I took that first bite of celery off the ground out here, it was like a flavor explosion. Just, you could taste the health. You could taste the life in that piece of celery. When we consume that kind of food, it creates the optimal uh, nutrient environment within our bodies, and that allows us to heal. We practice a lot of different techniques to keep nutrition and minerals in the plant itself, and uh, they're cared for very well by my hands. <laughs> We've deployed a few farms in high schools. For example, Bell Gardens High School, we deployed that farm within one week. We had it laid out, designed, and the following week we had it planted up. The students have a very small worldview because they don't get out. There's no commerce in the, in, the, in the city to speak of, and there's certainly no land to grow anything. I think being off your seat, like being able to experience everything like with your hands and touching everything, smelling everything, tasting, it just makes, like, it makes it much better than just seeing it or like writing about it. Our purpose is to help students understand and, in, and the community help everyone around understand that you can grow stuff in the city, good high quality stuff. Like in the local store, when you buy it, it doesn't really, like, it's normal. But once you actually grow it and it's yours, you feel proud when you actually start eating it. But we had an idea a long time ago, wouldn't it be really cool to have a garden on the roof? With this new technology, it's now really possible. It's practical. So we built a model, we built an architectural model, and we're going to speak to the superintendent about having a roof garden on the shelter area outside the cafeteria where the students sit. That would be pretty cool because like if I would be eating lunch, I'd be like, hey, I took a part in growing this and it kind of, it would feel amazing and like walking down to class, passing the cafeteria, seeing that and knowing that me and like the students in my class did that. And for them to attach themselves to this healthy food as their new addiction, I mean, that's like turning a page. If we can hook them on positive addictions instead of this negative stuff, I mean, there are jobs here for everybody. We have been donating to hundreds of schools. Why? Well, we find a lot of asphalt and a lot of chain link fence. And so by going to the schools and creating a socks farm like you see here, children are gonna learn that we can grow our own food. And that really does inspire a lot of confidence. Another farm out at the Boys Republic, we built just a thousand linear feet and that took uh, about a four hour morning 
to lay that out, fill the socks, and get that farm put in place. And two weeks later, we had food growing in it. We've got plenty of land here. We're on over 200 acres, but some of these young men aren't. They live in inner cities where they may have a small little tiny area that they may be able to rent or lease from somebody. And if we can empower them with some of the skills and knowledge that are available through sock gardening, then we see that as a win-win to where they can actually have a little plot of land somewhere and become their own little entrepreneur in downtown LA or in Sacramento or San Francisco. We look forward to having them have the tools to be able to do that. One of the most important facets of this, uh, this concept is, is it has to be economically sustainable. We have a couple very good partners that have stepped up. One is a, a restaurant chain called Tender Greens. I've spent the last 15 years thinking about food and have completely changed the way that I think about food in the last six, eight months after meeting Eric and I getting to work with this farm. Being able to bring it into the cities, be able to put these farms up on empty cement slabs, parking lots, on top of buildings, um, makes it accessible. And I think that's part of Part of why the United States is in the position we are with all of our diets right now because it's just not that accessible. I literally go two exits up the freeway and it's right there. And within minutes, it's, it's in my restaurant, in my hands, on a plate and served to the guests. So it's, it's everything, it's crucial. What Eric's doing right now is working and it's amazing. There's over 20 million people that live within an hour and a half, two hours of where we're standing right now. That's a lot of people being able to provide same-day harvested nutrient-dense foods to them uh, and also new vegetables that you don't normally see because we have enormous culinary wave of new foods coming on. Being able to introduce those in these small segments really is, is, is what, what it's all about right now. There's some great, great opportunity for business then to thrive. I own a couple of hotels, restaurants, bars. Uh, my latest uh, adventure is a juice bar in downtown Laguna Beach. It really is truly amazing, uh, the technology that he's laying out right now with farming. And when I think about my juice bar and I think about expanding and going to other cities, uh, in the back of my mind is, where are we gonna put the farm? When I first set out to build farms, I thought it was a lot more about me than it is. It's actually become about the young men and the young women that are working on this farm now. I get incredibly inspired looking at these kids' faces when they turn on to these, uh, when they get it. I never really thought how all this food got to the grocery store. I just kind of assumed it showed up there as if some magic food fairy just waved their wand and, and there it was. But now being out here in the trenches and seeing all the hard work it takes, all the, the consistency and showing up every day and watering these plants twice a day every day, it, it really does make me appreciate not only food, but living organisms that, other than just human life. My son, who's 23, is working here now, and I'm watching a transformation of a young man uh, into a, a much more uh, mature, involved adult. I've always believed in taking care of personal health, and I think eating well is probably one of the things that our generation needs to learn how to do and that if everyone kind of spread this positivity about organic farming, the world would be better off in a bunch of different ways. I think it's a journey and I'm growing just like these plants. I do feel a sense of uh, accomplishment by doing it myself and knowing that that food wouldn't be there if I hadn't played my role. We can create a brand new paradigm shift, not only in the way we perceive food, but in the way people interact with each other in the cities. We don't have a sense of community. And what do people commune over? Food. So let's get the food back in the house where it belongs. High quality food, that's the answer. And you just have to have a space to grow it. And with these micro farming techniques, anybody can do it. Before, like, I hardly knew anybody in the class, but after this, like, we consider ourselves as a family. Coming here, you're just surrounded by people who really do care, and you kind of have this, like, hope for not only sustainable farming, but also sustainability in a lot of different aspects of life. When you have healthy communities, you have all these wonderful benefits that, um, that again, preserve our resources. You know, families don't get broken, our schools are healthy, just all of these other things that can drain and cause resources to be expended that don't have to be. 
when people are healthy and when people have food independence, people are much more productive and able to be innovators, to be uh, creative conduits to advancing humanity. I'm confident that this, this simple technology that we're deploying in the cities will generate a complete new generation of young farmers. My goal is to really learn the skill so that I can then return the gift that I receive. It's knowledge, it's knowing that we're not limited to the resources that we think we are. If we can teach people, that gives me hope that I know they're going to be eating something that's nutritious and I, I want to be able to give that to the children that are in that situation where I was growing up. There were times when we would have to wait in line to receive food from the churches, sometimes depend on people that would come into the projects. And because I've been able to live that experience, it, it motivates me even more to want to do something like this. I don't feel that, that being hungry is, is a necessity in this world anymore. Um, I think that we can change that, definitely.